In this episode, I bend some rubber, sand some metal, poke some glass, and hammer some wood. Finally feels like I'm getting close to being done with the rear end. This caliper left to go, change the brake pads, put some copper grease on the slide pin. I need to replace the brake line, I'll show you why. And this is why the brake lines need to be changed. That's no good. Also fit the wheel studs, put the wheels on, lower the car, call it done. This pin will need to be sanded down smooth and then have some um, copper paste put on it to help it uh, slide through the pads properly. Worn a bit unevenly there. There's somewhere for the old fluid to go while I'm pressing the pistons back in rather than pushing filthy old fluid back up the lines. I'm not too worried about hanging the caliper off the old brake line because it's trashed anyway. I'm not trying to save it, but normally you would suspend this up in the wheel well. And get the pin and sand it down until it's nice and clean, which it currently isn't. And now, much cleaner. Now it's just a matter of bleeding the brakes out. Brake fluid is one of those things you often don't think about, you should. See, brake fluid is hydroscopic. It absorbs water from the atmosphere. And when that happens, the boiling point of the fluid lowers. You boil the brake fluid in your lines, can't stop. Also, water causes corrosion, which turns your fluid into something that looks like that. That's not good. Don't let your fluid get that bad.
Well, there we go. Front suspension, rear suspension, all the brakes, brake fluid, pads, you name it, it's done. Just need to get around to taking it for a test drive so I can get these brakes to bed in. Got the windshield to fix, bit of paint, I think I'm done. I know I've said that before. I kind of actually mean it this time. We'll see. Well, next thing to tackle is the windscreen. I'm fully prepared to replace it, but it may be cheaper to get the chips repaired. Maybe even cheaper again if I try and repair them myself. Never done it before. No idea how it's going to go, so let's try it and find out. There's three chips to tackle. The first, the smallest one, is uh, this guy here. Next size up, this one. Last of all, this guy here. That is probably going to be problematic, but I guess we'll see. So here's the things I think I'm going to need for the repair. A DIY windscreen repair kit, some isopropyl alcohol, and a toothbrush. Clean out any dirt and grime from the cracks, hopefully improve the clarity of the repair. And a pick to damage it some more. No, the pick is for removing any little bits of included glass still in the crack, so the resin doesn't have to fight its way around those and hopefully make the repair invisible get started I guess. So just starting with the pick I'm just trying to dig any little loose bits of glass out of there. Next step bit of isopropyl alcohol. Toothbrush get right in there scrub it in all different directions try and get any dirt or grime left in there out because these are old chips going to be important to try and get them as clean as possible. I think this one will probably disappear the best. Right, we're going to start with the smallest one first. We'll get the frame centered directly over the chip. Hopefully that's centered enough. And place this guy in. Just make sure that's sitting directly on the chip from the inside. Yeah, that's right over the crack. Very carefully put a couple of drops in. Now use this, push the resin down into the crack. Okay, so after adjusting the uh, pressure a little bit, I managed to get the air out and it looks like that chip is filled. Now just to uh, let it sort of sit in there for a bit, move on to the next step. Well, the instructions say to leave this for 10 to 15 minutes to allow the resin to actually soak into the chip or crack, but it appears it's already there. So I'm going to take it off now. Then it says if there's any chip cracks or visible to put some more resin on top. And then put a curing sheet on, like so. Push that in, just make that spread out a little bit just to fill the top. Make sure we got good coverage. And then it's a matter of moving it out into the sunlight for some UV to make that resin cure for about 10 to 15 minutes. 20 minutes later. All right, it's already peeled off the curing sheet. Now it's just a matter of using a razor blade to scrape off the leftover resin. Now we can get a better look at how that repair turned out. I don't even know if it's going to pick up well on camera, but that chip is pretty much invisible. It's like I can see a slight little speck here. 
I went to start the car so I could move it out into the sun to allow that resin to cure. It did nothing but turn over. No fire. I think the fuel pump is dead. The relay's clicking, so I think the circuit has power. There's no noise coming from the pump. I was hoping that the loss of top end power was just due to that clogged fuel filter. Unfortunately, I think this pump was on its way out for a while and decided that yesterday was the day it would call it quits. I already have a spare, so it's no big deal really. Let's throw this in and see if it gets the car to start. Just using a piece of timber so as not to damage the retaining ring at all. Use a screwdriver, there's a good chance you'll just snap these lugs off, crack the cap, and then you're in even more trouble. Well, that seal is very gummy and has seen better days. Inside the tank is relatively clean. I just pulled out a couple of pieces of that rubber gasket that had deteriorated and flaked off when I tried to remove it. Other than that, it's pretty good in there. Oh, fitting this lower line. Good engagement there. Happy with that. Very, very tight. Which I suppose is probably a good thing. That was an effort, but it's on. New seal. I wonder if I have to fit this seal to this cap first. Apparently not. Give it a bit of a turn. Get it sitting in there straight. You know what? I'm going to clean that first. It's almost like I heard some of you yelling through your TVs. Aren't you going to clean that ring? Well, uh, clean the ring. Funny. Um, yeah, so I did it because, you know, last thing I need is to be judged. I mean, any more than I normally am. Rest assured, my ring is clean and tight. So I've just sat a microphone on top of the pump. So the bad news is if it works, you'll be deafened. The good news is if it works, it's working. All right, here we go. Well, that sounded like a pump running to me. Prime it again and then see if it'll actually start. Straight away. Perfect. New fuel pump fixed the issue. You know, two steps forward, seven back. I swear we'll get there one day.
Next chip, let's get this lined up. That is significantly better. Pretty hard to pick up, but it's that little blurry smudge instead of a chip now. The approach for this crack is a lot different to those chips. We don't need the alignment tool and the pressure plunger. This is simply a matter of running some resin along the crack and then working the glass from behind, pushing it in and out to try and draw this resin in via capillary action. You don't want to push too hard and make the crack worse. You do want to be able to move the glass so it pulls that resin in, hopefully. I have knocked and pushed and smeared that as much as I can. It's slightly visible, but when the resin cures, it may actually disappear. It's a matter of wait and see now. A few moments later, well, it's still fairly visible, but it's better than it was. That's a lot of resin to take off. much better from inside. We will see if that is enough to pass a roadworthy. <clears throat> well, that's probably enough for one day. We're getting to the pointy end of things, nearly finished. It's pretty much all I've got left to do is the paint. I think I need to wait for a less windy day, a bit more warmth to help the paint cure. Well, I guess that's it for now. See you in the next one.